details, but what I've discovered in my lifetime, in the years as an adventurer, it's very straightforward. You know, the mountain is there. You have a topographical map that's quite accurate these days. You have weather patterns that can predict what's happening on the horizon. You have access to tremendous gear and innovation. And there is a finish line. There's a set amount of time, and off you go and you climb. It can be hard. It can be life-threatening. Maybe lives are at stake. But I've discovered in business that livelihoods are at stake. And we generally take them equally as seriously. The stakes are high. The summit for us in business seems to always be shifting. The winds that blow upon us through regulation or who knows what, competition, are unpredictable. There is no meteorologist that can effectively give us any bits of information. We don't have a barometer, per se, in business. We have our KPIs. We have our leaders. I thought that was a wonderful phrase that Paul gave this morning that I took some inspiration from, this notion of being uh, healthy in our humility. That shows to me someone that has the experience of leading, who has learned through the difference between arrogance and confidence, that understanding of, of a healthy humility that sits right in beside the drive to innovate, to progress and move forward. And it's harder at work than it is in these dramatic environments. Think of athletes. It's the same deal, the score is kept the clock ticks. It's very immediate information. They function. I function here in a world that is black and white. Step here, live. Step there, die. The feedback's immediate. There's no dispute. Wouldn't it be great to live in a world like that? Well, it isn't. We function in shades of gray, in the subtleties, often in the margins looking in. With that in mind, how do we get the job done? How can we take lessons from here and inherit them here? And one of the most contrasting differences, for this, we practice. Athletes practice before they play a game. The Blue Jays won last night. You know they're practicing. They're watching tape. They're practicing before the next game. As a Mountaineer, I'm practicing constantly. The ratio is roughly nine to one. For every nine moments in time, you practice for that one moment in competition, about nine to one. In business, I would suggest it's the other way around, if at all, because we have so much work to do. We have so much to-dos. We have so much performance. That's why a conference like this can be so impactful in our personal careers, because we're doing a bit of business practice. Yes, you're going to sneak away and hit some email when I finally shut up and we can go to lunch. Yes, it's going to pile up and you're going to have more work to overcome when you get back. Hopefully, people will ask you, how was the conference? How was G-Force? What did you get out of it? Hopefully, you're not going, hey, because you're making notes and you're paying attention. But this is part of our practice. So being here and the time to be here and the effort to be here is not unlike what athletes do, not unlike what climbers do, the practice. So take this seriously, invest yourself into it and get that value. And we need to do more of it, more practice as business people because we don't, we just bog down in the work that we get, have to do. And I believe sometimes we're rendered ineffectual. Practice more and our performance will improve. For three years, we practiced until we went back to the mountain. Three years of wading through the muck of rejection. Three years of trying to raise the half a million bucks that it takes to underscore an expedition. You know how difficult it is for the sales team to create a customer in the first place. Customer acquisition. It's monstrously hard. 